Okay, okay. please, you have the virtual floor, take it away. Thank you, thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me at this event. And I am very sorry that I could not participate in presence to celebrate Nick. I have a paper with Nick, and this paper concerns the computation of the metric speed root. The metric speed root can be seen as the solution of a polynomial metric equation, and this talk is somehow related to the solution. So, Beatrice, so, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Your microphone appears to be a little bit uh, muffled or unclear. Is it possible to yes. change something? Uh, so I'm trying to increase my, can you hear me now? Is it better? Yes, yes that's better, thank you. Okay. So I'm still sharing the screen, I guess. Yes. So I'm presenting slides now. Okay. So um, this talk is, uh, um, concerns uh, the solution, the numerical solution of a, a class of uh, power series and um, polynomial metric equations. And this is a joint work with Dario Bini and, and Di Latouche. So we are interested in the numerical solution of this power series matrix equation. So X is the unknown, X is the square matrix, and the coefficients uh, A minus one, A zero, A one, and so on are square non-negative matrices. And we assume that the sum of all these matrices is rho stochastic. Um, what is the motivation of this assumption? Uh, this equation arises in the analysis of a kind of uh, Markov chains uh, arising in Turing models. And under these assumptions, these simple assumptions, uh, this equation has a minimal non-negative solution, which is called G. Minimal uh, means according to component-wise ordering. So among uh, all the possible non-negative solution, there is a minimal non-negative solution. And we can uh, give some properties, uh, spectral properties of this matrix. And in particular, we may give conditions under which the solution is stochastic or uh, sub-stochastic. And these conditions are related to the so-called drift of the Markov chain, that is the scalar product, and this is scalar product between two vectors. One vector alpha is the steady state vector, the left Perron eigenvector of the matrix A. A is the sum of all the coefficients. And uh, uh, A is uh, this, uh, uh, this sum. So we have to multiply this um, power series by the vector of all ones. And according to the sign of this drift, uh, the solution is stochastic or sub-stochastic. And the solution in the sub-stochastic case is spectral radius, strictly less than one. And the problem is difficult uh, from a computational point of view when this drift is close to zero. Well, in the case where the drift is zero, we have a, a kind of a critical problem. When mm, the drift is close to zero, we have a uh, nil conditioned problem. So uh, let's keep this in mind for the numerical experiments. So um, a review about classical fixed point iterations. There are three classical iterations. Uh, the, the names uh, natural, traditional, new based comes from the probabilistic um, uh, interpretation of this functional iteration. So we start from uh, x0. Then in the natural iteration, we just apply fixed point iteration. In the traditional uh, uh, fixed point iteration, we collect the linear term in the matrix equation and we solve a linear system at each step where the matrix uh, is constant. The matrix is identity minus A0 and the right hand side depends on the previous approximation. In the U-based um, uh, fixed point iteration, we collect uh, X in all the terms where X uh, appears. And at each step, we solve a, um, a linear system which depends on the previous approximation. We have some uh, um, convergence properties. In particular, if we start from the null matrix, 
the three sequences converge monotonically to the sort solution. And the U-based uh, iteration is faster than the traditional, which is faster than the natural iteration. Uh, we may give a functional interpretation of these three uh, classical iteration. We consider this matrix power series. It is, we associate a power series, a matrix power series to the power series matrix equation. That is the power series where the matrix coefficients are the coefficients of the equation. Uh, we may think uh, at this uh, power series as a formal power series, but this power series is also convergent in the closed unit disk, since uh, the coefficients are non-negative matrices, which sum to a stochastic matrix. And now we decompose this power series as the sum of these two guys. A minus uh, Z is a power series plus a second power series, a zero Z times Z. And uh, the matrix equation is replaced by an equivalent equation where Z is replaced by a matrix X. And uh, um, this latter equation, uh, which is still uh, nonlinear, is solved by means of a fixed point iteration where the new X is this one is the uh, the one the x on the left hand side, and uh, the new x is also the x appearing uh, um, the, the x which multiplies a zero x, and uh, we may look at the classical fixed point iteration in this framework. Uh, for instance, the natural iteration is obtained by taking a minus one as the power series, the full power series. A zero is zero, and uh, therefore we compute in natural iteration. We compute this uh, sequence. Uh, we may look at uh, this sequence as to um, a way to embed all the terms uh, of degree greater than zero in the power series matrix equation into a constant coefficient. We may give a similar interpretation for the traditional iteration. In this case, a minus one of z is this power series. A zero of z is just the constant coefficient a zero. And traditional iteration consists in uh, uh, solving this equation where the unknown is xk plus one at each step. In this case, all the terms of degree greater than one are embedded into the constant coefficient, are embedded into this term. And similarly, for the last uh, uh, fixed point iteration, the splitting is this one. The series a minus one of z is just the constant coefficient. A zero is what is left uh, up to a multiplication by z. And the U-based iteration consists in solving this system at each step here the terms of degree greater than one are embedded into the linear coefficient. So the general property for the cl these classical iterations is that uh, the original power series matrix equation is reduced to a linear equation where the nonlinear part is embedded either in the constant or in the linear coefficient of the power series matrix equation. And therefore, the computation of uh, the new approximation given the previous approximation consists in solving a linear system. So, uh, mm, uh, what we do, what is our contribution? Uh, this interpretation uh, leads to the idea to construct a family of fixed point iteration uh, by reducing the original power series matrix equation to a polynomial matrix equation of degree q plus one. So we do not have anymore a linear equation, but we have a polynomial matrix equation of degree q plus one, uh, where the coefficients a minus one of x, a zero of x, and so on depend, depend on x itself. Um, 
so how, how do we construct this uh, family of, um, of, of iterations of polynomials? Uh, we introduce this, this power series AL of Z. These are power series. Uh, they are Q plus two power series in the, um, we can think as, as formal power series with the constraint that the coefficients are non-negative. And the condition is that the original power series can be written as the sum of uh, Q plus two terms of this kind. We have the L power series times Z to L plus one. And we have a, a theorem which allows then to prove some convergence proof that, we, we, that allows to um, introduce a family of functional iterations that work. Um, we have this first result. If S is any non-negative matrix, which is substochastic, therefore the sum of the entries on each row is at most equal to one, and we consider, if we consider this polynomial matrix equation, you see where the coefficients are the power series AL uh, evaluated in the matrix S, then this polynomial matrix equation has a minimal non-negative solution. And such solution is substochastic. And in the special case where S is equal to the sort solution of the original equation, then the minimal non negative solution of this equation coincides with G. Um, and therefore, we introduce a new family, this new family of functional iteration. Given an initial approximation x0, we solve at each step a polynomial matrix equation of degree q plus 1. And the coefficients are obtained by evaluating this power series in the previous approximation. Well, we have several questions. Uh, which, which choice of x0 guarantees the, the existence of the solution at each step? So we want the, the sequence to be well-defined and we want the sequence to converge. And another issue, non trivial issue is uh, how to solve uh, this polynomial equation at each step. So we can answer to this question concerning convergence properties. We have a basic convergence result. If we start with a null matrix, then we may show that the coefficients of the new equation, of the equation that we have to solve at each step are non negative. And they sum at uh, at a substochastic matrix. And these two uh, properties allow us to show that this matrix equation has a minimal non negative solution. And this minimal non negative solution will be the new approximation, xk plus 1. And concerning the sequence of approximations, we can show that the sequence is monotonic. And since it is bounded, this sequence is conversion. And for continuity properties, we can show that uh, the limit is the solution we were looking for. So we have these convergence properties that allow to say that this uh, uh, family of uh, fixed point iterations uh, converges to the sort solution if the starting approximation is the null matrix. But we would like also to understand what is the uh, speed of convergence of this class of algorithms. We can perform an error analysis. So we define the error at each step as the difference between the limit and the current approximation. Then by performing some uh, technical, uh, um, some technical computations, uh, we arrive at a formula uh, where we relate the error at Step k plus one uh, appears here and here with the error at the previous step. And what we observe is that there is a linear dependence of the error at two subsequent steps. And this property allows to estimate the speed of convergence. Indeed, since uh, 
we have monotonic convergence. If the starting approximation is the null matrix, then the error is a matrix, is a non-negative matrix. And in particular, the infinite norm of the, mat uh, of the error is equal to the infinity norm of the vector that obtained by multiplying the, the error by the vector of all ones. And by using monotonicity and other properties, we show these properties, the vector uh, of the error at step k plus one is less than component wise, less than a matrix times the vector of the previous step. So we have a kind of um, convergence result uh, like uh, iterative methods for linear systems. And the matrix, the iteration matrix, M inverse N, as an explicit expression, I mean, M and then have an ex explicit expression which depends on the choice of the, um, of the coefficients. But the very nice property is that if we compute the difference between M and N, the difference is a matrix. And this matrix is independent of the choice of the coefficients. So, and, and moreover, this is a regular splitting. So uh, independently of the choice of the coefficients, M inverse N, uh, the, sorry, the um, convergence split depends on M inverse N, where M minus N is a regular splitting of a, a constant matrix, matrix, which is independent of the choice of the algorithm. And this is a strong result. Since this result allows to compare the speed of convergence of different algorithms. And in particular, we would like to see what is the fastest, uh, which, which uh, uh, choice uh, maximizes the convergence once I have fixed the degree of the polynomial. And we can show that uh, uh, given Q, so given the degree of the polynomial, the choice that maximizes the speed of convergence is the one where the coefficients uh, are, um, the coefficients till the degree Q are constant, are the same coefficients as the original equation. And uh, the um, remaining terms are embedded into the largest degree coefficient. So the fastest convergence is obtained when the tail is embedded into the largest degree matrix coefficient. And then we can also compare um, the speed of convergence for different degrees of polynomials. So we have fixed the degree Q1, and we consider fixed point iteration where we embed the tail into the largest degree coefficient. And we can show that if Q1 is greater than Q2, then the first iteration converges faster than the second iteration. And this is a quite natural, this is what we expect. Uh, in fact, if the original equation is a polynomial equation, and if we choose Q as the degree of the polynomial equation, we are convergence in just one step. Okay, so our uh, algorithm can be seen as a two-level iterative method. We have an outer iteration. This is the fixed Q, this is the fastest iteration. So we choose this kind of iteration. So fixed Q, we solve a polynomial, a matrix polynomial equation of degree Q plus one at each step. And to solve this equation, we can apply, a, for instance, a fixed point iteration. Uh, for instance, the U base, this is an example that we may use uh, the algorithm of, uh, of, of choice. For instance, if the degree is two, we may use, for instance, cyclic reduction or other algorithms. Uh, I have some numerical results. Um, this is a synthetic example where the size of the coefficient is 20. And the degree, well, we cannot have a power series matrix equation, but we have a polynomial matrix equation of large degree. The degree is um, 1,500. And uh, in this picture, you see the residual as a function of a number of iterations of the outer iteration uh, with different degree, um, degree Q. 
uh, in the left picture, the, we have drift, which is equal to minus 0.1. In this, uh, in the second picture, the drift is closer uh, to zero. So the problem is uh, more difficult than the previous one. And you, you can see the linear convergence and you can see how the speed of convergence increases as Q uh, increases. And we may see that uh, a moderately small value of Q, Q equal to six leads to a, a much faster convergence with respect to the case Q equal to two. And you see Q equal to six is very small with respect to the degree of the original uh, equation. Uh, but we have also to take care of the time needed to solve the equation at each step. Um, so in this picture, I'm showing also the CPU time. This is a, a real example, an example coming from an application uh, from a PHPH1Q uh, with the size of the matrix is 10 and the, the degree is smaller here, uh, it's 61. And uh, in blue in the first picture, uh, you can see the CPU time as a function of the degree Q. And to have a reference uh, in the green line, uh, we have reported the CPU time needed by a cyclic reduction applied to the, poly the original polynomial matrix equation. And in red, uh, uh, it's reported the CPU time of the U-based iteration, the fastest iteration uh, among the classical iteration. And you can see that there is an optimal value of the degree, which minimizes the CPU time. And so uh, th there is a, a trade-off between the degree, the convergence speed, and the computational time needed to solve the equation at each step. Uh, in the last two pictures, uh, I report the outer iteration. Uh, you see, uh, as the degree increases, uh, the number of iteration tends to stabilize. Well, they, de they decrease very fast at the beginning. And uh, um, in the third picture, I reported the number of inner, inner iterations, so the number of iterations needed to solve the uh, polynomial matrix equation at each step. Um, this is the bibliography. This paper has been published in uh, I'm a Journal of Numerical Analysis. And uh, happy birthday, Nick. I'm very sorry not to be there to celebrate with you this uh, anniversary. Thank you very much for your attention.